Hello and welcome to this next part in my grid trading series. I've called this part 10.1 because it's really just an update to part 10. If you've seen the earlier parts uh, 9 and 10, this is where I have introduced a concept to set a limit on the trade so that uh, I will not buy above a certain limit and I will not sell below another limit. In the first of these three parts, I set the limit manually There's as inputs on the price. In the second, I used a trend indicator um, moving average to set a maximum and minimum and in this third part I'm going to introduce an oscillator as the indicator because the oscillator will work a little differently to the trend indicator and this is based on a suggestion that I had which was to use the RSI and now the RSI isn't very different to many other oscillators I'm just going to use the RSI but you should be able to see how you can easily introduce a different oscillator if you want to if you've just started watching with this video, I am building on code that has already been created in earlier videos. There is a playlist for the entire series, but you don't need to watch every video just to get to the beginning point here, because many of the videos simply implement a suggestion, and then I go back to the base code again to start with the next. There will be a list in the description to the video that shows how you can get to this particular video through the stages of actual code development. So if you want to just go through from the beginning and see how this code has been developed, check that list in the description and then you can watch just those videos. And now let's move on to the code. I'm beginning with the code as at version 2.012 and I'm going to simply make a version 2.013. And to do that, all I do is copy this folder and then change this link and update the comments in main. So now I've made the simple version update. The next thing I'm going to do is go to the input because I'll have slightly different inputs for the RSI compared to the moving average. So here I am going to change the period to something a little more appropriate to RSI. I'll leave the period as a daily. Uh, obviously I'm going to change these two comments. I'm also going to introduce an input to set the applied price. Uh, when I ran the moving average, I set the applied price for the high level to the price high and for the low level to the price low. I'm going to let you enter it, but I'll set the default to price close. And then I'm going to have two more inputs where you set the high and low levels for the RSI. And I'll set those initially to the defaults, which are typically 70 and 30. So now I've done all that, I've also there you go. I've also added this input for a range index, and that simply determines the candle or bar number that I'm going to be using when I measure the RSI. And I've got a mistake there, that needs to be a semicolon. The next thing I'll change is the config. Because here previously I had indicators trend, I need to change that to indicators oscillator. When I wrote this for moving averages, I had two different indicators for the high and low. With the RSI, I only have one indicator. Now, that's up to you. You can uh, have a totally different indicator for the high and the low value. Uh, I don't see much of a need for that, so I'm just going to have one. Firstly, I'm going to change that from CIMA to CIRSI, and then I'm going to just delete the second indicator. And now that I've done that, I also need to update this where I'm deleting the indicator and now I need to update these lines where I'm creating the indicator so I've removed the second indicator here I now I'm setting up a CI RSI brackets in there uh, I'm creating the indicator then symbol the range time frame the range period and the range applied price in these lines where I'm setting the range indicator object for the buy and the sell leg, obviously that's just the one indicator now, the RSI still has a buffer number of zero and I'm going to replace this hard-coded one with the input that I've now added.
But now, as well as setting the indicator object, I need to update those values that we entered for the high and the low. The leg base class already has a range value, which is what I used for the first part of this sequence where I was setting the range manually. So I'm just going to reuse that for the oscillator limits. And that should be everything I need to do in main. I can just now go to the leg and then update the is range OK to handle this values. The is range OK function, it takes an input of double price. I'm not going to need that because I'm going to be comparing to the oscillator value rather than the price. But I think I'll just leave that there rather than change the interface. I won't be using price, but it won't cause any harm there. So I'll obviously change the comment. I'm still going to check for this range indicator object. I will need to add a test to see that the range indicator value is set because I'm going to allow you to set a zero as meaning don't test the range. The refresh should be the same and I'll have to update this for the price and value because I'm not comparing price now. I'm going to be comparing the indicator value with the input limits. So here's the test, the M range value less than or equal to zero, I'll return true because that means you're not using that particular indicator and so I can just let you carry on and trade. The refresh here is still needed for MT5. I'm still getting the value by calling range indicator object dot get data and that passes in the buffer which we set earlier and the indicator index which was set earlier. I've reversed this because I'm saying if the value of the indicator is greater than the range value and remember that GT is in the direction of the trade. So for buy, it's greater if the value is higher and for sell, it's greater if the value is lower. Then return false because that means I've gone past that indicator maximum limit. And if I get to this line, I just return true. And that should be everything that I need. Let me go back to Grid Trader. I'll just try compile. No syntax errors there. So now I can go on and run some tests and see what I get. So I'm now at the inputs ready to test this. Most of the values I'm going to leave at the defaults because that is uh, what I want to be able to do to compare to earlier versions. I've got the 20 period one hour RSI using the close price. I'm testing bar number one for the RSI. The high value at 70 and the low value at 30. So I won't be buying if the RSI is above 70. I won't be selling if the RSI is below 30. So that test has finished now. You can see the graph here on screen. If I look at the back test results, that has a total profit of 4,923, which is a little bit down from the original baseline profit of 5,021, but not by much. The absolute drawdown at 598, though, is actually higher than the drawdown from the baseline, which was only 578. So I'm not seeing a benefit here, and the maximum drawdown at 1,918 is only slightly lower than the baseline maximum drawdown of 1991. I'm going to change the inputs and try that again. I'm just going to set it to 50 and 50. So the 50-50 test has finished. The chart actually looks a little better, although we went into a drawdown here and then kind of stayed at that level. The back test results, the profit has reduced further. The drawdown absolute though is down to a more reasonable level and the drawdown maximum is also reduced. Not sure if this is a better than it was before, given that we have a reduced net profit, but it, uh, I will call it a, an improvement over the 70 and 30. I might just try one other thing. I'm going to change this to 30 and 70. Now, I know this is called range high and range low, but there's nothing in the code to force the high to be a higher value than the low. In fact, I probably should have called it uh, the buy limit and the sell limit. Live and learn. Now that test has finished and I can see that the graph looks a little better because the equity is much closer to the balance, but that's largely because the profit is so small. If I just go to the back test result here, profit's only $353. And I think what I'll do here is use the 50-50 range as the setting for this particular method. So let's look at the results in a table and compare to some of the other approaches. First, I've just compared the graphs here. The top chart is the baseline chart and the lower chart is the RSI limit for 50 and 50. 
not a lot of difference in the shape of the charts and I think given that the slight reduction in the profit they're almost the same in terms of the carry costs. If I look at the table of results here is the most recent result from 2.013 the RSI 5050 that's third placed because of the profit so it's just behind the range limited MA200 um, but still the baseline has the best profit performance although the drawdowns on the 200 hour range and the RSI 5050 are better so I'll leave it up to you there are obviously other ways that you can set this the RSI settings you can use almost anything you like uh, you can change the period of the RSI or the time frame I actually did test this same thing with a 40 period and a 10 period and I tested it using a daily time frame and it didn't change the results very much so I didn't bother to show those to you but this is what we have so far now I have received some other suggestions for more variations to this particular approach where we set limit values for the trading but I'm going to move on next to a different type of approach because I want to show something else that we can do and I'll probably come back at a later stage and implement some of those minor variations again on this range limited trading but for the next video I will be showing a different approach to try to improve the grid trader if you have suggestions for improvements to the grid trader then leave them in the comments I'll try to get through as many as I can and if you're getting value from this series remember click the like button and if you want to see more of the videos click subscribe and then click the bell icon to be notified when the next video is released thank you for watching